To get token price feeds on chain can be really useful for a lot of tasks but at the same time can be really tricky since you're trying to bring web 2 data to web 3. This is where chain link price feeds are useful. Chain link price feeds are easy to integrate and are absolutely free. This is because unlike VRF where you call your own random number and you need to pay the oracle in link tokens, price feeds are shared data and a lot of companies are already sponsoring it, meaning you get to use it for free. With all that said, let's get into the tutorial. We have a basic contract setup with license identifier, pragma and constructor. Next we are going to import aggregator v3 interface, link for this will be in the description. You can also find it in Chainlink's GitHub page. Now let's define a variable of type aggregator v3 interface. Let's keep it internal and call it price feed. Now in a constructor, we define this. For the contract address, let's make it a bit more dynamic. So instead of completely hard coding it, let's take an address parameter in a constructor and call it feed address and pass the feed address in the aggregator instance. You're almost done with the setup here and now we need to just call a function to get the data we want. In the chainlink docs, you can check out the price feed API reference to get all various functions you can call here. Here you can get decimals, description, get particular round data with round id, version and latest round data. For this tutorial, we are going to use the latest round data, but all of the functions defined here are view functions and will have pretty similar implementation. Let's define our function get latest price. We will have it as an external view and we return from it just the latest price and nothing else. In the documentation, you can see the function latest round data returns five different values. So we start by defining a tuple where we can store each of those values. And then we do this. Now we can simply return price as int. Let's deploy it on Mumbai testnet and test it out. While deploying, in the constructor we need to put in data feed address. We can get that from the docs. Let's try out ETH in USD address. Here we get 8 decimal places as you can see in the docs. Let's deploy and try it out. We can successfully call our function and get the price, but it doesn't seem right. We know that we are supposed to have 8 decimal places and while we can hardcode that, why not just return a second value that tells our frontend how many decimal places we have. In the same function, we create a new uint variable and store pricefeed.decimals. Now we add the new uint8 return parameter and compile and deploy. This time we are getting the price for ETH in USD as well as the second parameter of 8 which shows the decimal places we have. That was all for this video but if you have any doubts post them in the comments and we will see you next time.